The following is a conversation that I had with Barbara Cuesta. And unfortunately, somehow the original recording was corrupted. So there are some annoying pops and some distorted noises and some cuts that it feels like yeah, there is no reception so much. However, I challenge you to stay tuned all the way since it's a very short episode because I was lucky enough to have one hour with Barbara and as you will hear, she is incredible. The songs that she plays and also the energy that she radiates as a human. So thank you, Barbara. And just before we dive in, so I would like to tell you all that I have a birthday on July 5th. And what will make me very happy is that I'll just subscribe, follow this podcast, wish me happy birthday in the comments, anything, share this episode, tell your friends about it, share it with some musicians, with some artists. And also Barbara got a concert on the very same day. So just come and celebrate with us. It's going to be in Schokoladen in Berlin, July 5th, Wednesday. For more details, check down those little notes in the Spotify button, you know, just scroll down with your beautiful thumb. Thumb it up, down. That's it. Enjoy. Sound of the Pigeon Podcast. Sound of the Pigeon Podcast. Sound of the Pigeon Podcast. Rocking on a boat. I swam ashore, and your house received me once more. Kissed my feet as they touched the floor. Rocking on. Hello, 
Paula. Hi, how are you? Welcome to the podcast. I'm good. How are you? I'm good. You came with a lot of energy today. Yeah? Yes. <laughs> it's the moment you came with the door, you came with a huge smile. <laughs> and you're just uh, very energetic. But I think it's because you're also promoting yourself right now. Yeah, I'm in the middle of the release and um, yeah, pretty much doing everything at the moment because I'm also, um, I founded my own record label. So it's like really everything. You also the CEO of the record mm -hmm. uh, record label. Yeah. Oh, and what what do you do in the record label? How does it called? It's called Santianis Records, and um, Santianis is a place that really exists. It's like um, a place, um, a, a village, a small village in, in northern Spain, where my Spanish family is from. In the Basque country? No, it's no. Asturias. Yeah, it's close. All right. Yeah. And yeah, I founded that label last year and now I'm releasing my first um, songs on that label. Yeah, you already released one song. Mm -hmm. but you yeah. already played it here live. Mm -hmm. uh, can it be the first song? I think it yeah. should be the first song, right? Uh, the first one was the Spanish song. Yeah, but I mean, uh, as the people listen to it, uh, right. the question, did they hear it already or they will hear it Okay, in the let's see, we're time traveling. Yeah, we don't know where we are in time. <laughs> we're somewhere um, in the so present. that one is Rocking on a Boat. Yeah. Yeah, that's the single that was already released a few days ago. And then um, another song that people are going to hear is Los Que Se Queda, a Spanish song that is going to come out in July. So like I'm in between releases. It's very exciting. Um, also to understand how these things work now in 2023. Like the last time I released was 10 years ago. And now it's, of course, much more digital and Spotify yeah. is there and, and um, all these market modules <laughs> yeah it's different than it used to be it's so like you have to you really have to to um get to know and understand all these different pl platforms and have so much more work as an artist especially as an independent artist and at the same time people are streaming they're not buying actually buying the music anymore or they can like i have a band camp for example yeah for that reason so that people can you know ethically Yes, and it's better than streams. You know, for us as artists, it's so important. I think if you sell digital version of the album on Bandcamp mm -hmm. for 100 people, mm -hmm. it's worth like 1 million streams and on Spotify something or something like that. Yeah. yeah. So all of yeah. you fans who are listening, this is so important. <laughs> Support us. It's uh, for you it might be only 10 euros, but for us the artists, it's a lot, a lot, a lot. Yeah. And also, you know, something that I that I liked about buying the song is like, then you have the song and the 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 worth of the song is not determined by how many people how often listen to it. You know, the, the Spotify algorithm works like that. The more yeah. often people listen to it, then the higher it goes up and the more. And when you bought the album at a concert like a few years ago, nobody asked you, but how many times do you listen to it? You listen to it whenever you like and the song accompanies you or the album accompanies yeah. you. And that is something like, it, I just don't like the idea that people have to listen to it very often and you have to really more or less people like and listen to it again and again and again. Yeah, it's, it's very different today. Yeah. I also agree about the physical album. There is some energy to it. Even if we don't listen to it, it's right mm -hmm. there somehow. Yeah. And then the booklets, of course. And the booklets. I mean, I don't want to sound <laughs> too... I really like... I appreciate a lot about this digital area, era that we're in because we can also connect in very many different ways across borders and across countries, right? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. It's, it, there is a lot of possibilities that are open for us as artists. Mm. As much as there are many things that we would say they're kind of destroying the industry, but overall, I think as artists, we have the best opportunity right now mm. in these times. And uh, I think once crypto will be implemented and we will have all this Web3 kind of talk, I don't know if you're familiar with that. With what? Web3. No, I'm not. Mm. All right, so you can imagine uh, Web3 is the third generation of the internet, right? So the first generation was just, um, just the ability... What? AOL. AOL, not even AOL before dial. that. <laughs> yeah, well, it's like ages ago, right? Yeah. AOL Messenger. <laughs> so you can imagine the first uh, wave of the internet is just be able to read stuff. 
right? And then when AOL started and uh, the technology really spiked, then we had also the opportunity to write stuff. Mm -hmm. But we don't own anything in the internet. And this is what Web3 is basically want to solve. Mm -hmm. So if you put your data somewhere and there is use of your data, then you can earn money from it, mm -hmm. which today doesn't exist, right? Some other companies make money of your data. Yeah. So that's what it's about to solve. And it can solve in many ways. Uh, once you take care of the the trust issue that we have in the internet that you, you don't know who you're talking with, right? Mm. It could be anyone. Mm. Um, and you don't know if it's a bot, if it's a real person. Uh, so this solves this Web3. It gives everyone some kind of certificate that they are real, mm -hmm. even though they can be anonymous. Mm -hmm. And also, uh, let's say for a podcast, uh, this is kind of... Um, in a very progressed state that if someone is listening to a podcast, they're paying cents for how much they listen to the podcast. Yeah. So this is also a model that can be uh, implemented. Also all the NFTs, probably you heard, heard about mm. NFTs. Yeah. So people actually own pieces of your digital music. Yeah. And then when they sell it, so you also get money from it. Yeah. You get like a percentage. Yeah, that is already happening. Yeah. yeah. It's very interesting. Yeah, exactly. And to perform in digital spaces, I, I don't know, it's crazy. It's yeah. mind blowing what we can do. And once everything will be implemented, I think also artists, somehow the model of the business of an artist will be more beneficial for the artist, I believe. Mm. I hope. Ah, that, that's very, very interesting things to come up. Also talking about interesting things to come up, <laughs> coming back to the project. So I'm, I'm going to play a release concert on uh, 5th of July at Schokoladen yes. with my band. And I would really like to invite everyone to come. It's a very exciting date for us. And we're going to present the new songs of um, Euphoria, the album that is going to come out this year. Cool. And it's also my birthday. Yeah, you told me. In a magical me. way. Yeah. Where is it going to be exactly? Like which place in Berlin? Uh, it's Mitte. It's called Schokoladen. It's in Mitte. Um, I think it's Torstrasse or like this this corner. I mean, just if you Google Schokoladen, you should find it because they, they uh, do a lot of concerts. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, also there will be a link. So if you're listening on Spotify, probably uh, just scroll down, you will see a link, click on it, you can you can buy the tickets. And uh, also you can scroll down even more and you have a place where you can comment. Um, ah. So please comment if you have <laughs> any question to Barbara, if you want to say anything, any comment, if you want to say that you were here and get a shout out. So shout out to Palmira Fuhrman that they would just release an episode. And she commented on the episode. So shout out to Palmira. Thank you for commenting. Uh, it also helps the artist uh, really come up with the algorithm as we talked before. <laughs> so it's really important. So this podcast can go higher, support Barbara and, uh, and comment something. Yeah. And I love your name, Barbara. Oh, thank you. I think it's one of the most unique names. Really? Yes. I, I had obsession with this name. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. Uh, it was a time when I everything was Barbara for me. Oh, it was really? just fun to say this name. And I got infected uh, by a friend of mine who said that. So I was infected with the Barbara. What else would you like to, to share about the, the process that you had with your music, with the creative process? And um, yeah, how did you build this album up? Because I heard uh, some songs that you had before and you have a lot of raw energy that is uh, kind of uh, wants to go out and tell something. You have a lot of things that you want to say. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, well, I made um, three albums. The first one was a German album, and that was really one where I was super young and I felt like I had a lot of stuff to tell. Um, and then um, with this album, I feel like it's, there are certain stories of certain people or groups of people that need to be told. Um, and that was the drive for me for, for creating these songs in this album. For example, you know, um, queer love stories. You know, we have this boy meets girl story so much and in so many versions. Yeah. And I think it's time for like, you know, I don't know, queer artists, trans artists to, to come up and, and just speak up and tell their unique um, world of view of the world. And, and, you know, I feel like it's coming. And I'm also one of these queer artists who say like, you know, we are there and we are also 
have something to say. And I think it sounds different and the storytelling is different than from the mainstream, you know. And then also the songs are very much about people like migrants, like um, people who come, you know, from overseas, from different countries and want to, you know, integrate in a society that works in a certain way. And, you know, it's like this rocking on a boat theme from the song we talked about is that, that the that the floor still seems to move and, and be like rocking for people who come um, and want to integrate into the society. And it's just like we, we, we're not, we don't have the same stories. And I think people... Uh, like migrants have very, very interesting t stories to tell and we should listen to them. Um, and yeah, I tried um, to put that into the songs. Do you feel as a migrant? We talked before the podcast that you're also Spanish and also German. Yeah. And I wonder if you have this kind of split between the cultures. I am a child of um, a, a migrating person. My, my grandmother immigrated to Germany as a Gastarbeiter, guest worker in the 60s and and then she she went first without knowing any German and then her husband which was my grandfather and her son which was my father um, came later to join her because she found like a job in a factory and then they also started to work here and live here and um, and so I I definitely have this heritage of people who migrated and feel like it's a it's a very in, important part for me to invest into that and to understand how they felt and how that also shaped, you know, the next generations of people who are now, you know, I grew up in Germany, but I can't tell you how many times people told me like, where are you from? You're not from here. You know, just of the way that I look or because of my last name, which is not German. And um, so I always felt like I, I grew up here in Germany, but if so many Germans think that I'm not from here, then I also then I kind of don't feel like I'm from here. You know, of course, I claim that this is also my homeland, but also I feel like I could belong anywhere or nowhere. I don't know if you understand this yeah, feeling or, or if you relate. Even from Israel, even though I was born there, mm -hmm. so my grandparents from my mom's side, they come from Iraq, mm -hmm. and from my dad's side, they come from uh, Lithuania, Poland, this mm -hmm. area. Um, I don't know what's the connection to this land for those two, uh, for Iraqi people and Lithuanian people, but mm -hmm. somehow they brought all the Jewish people to Israel mm -hmm. for some reason. And um, yeah, so I never felt so connected to the land, but I did felt my, my roots somehow. Um, it's more feeling than something tangible, right? Mm -hmm. And now um, I'm in Germany for six years, so yeah. I'm like immigrating with immigration. Mm -hmm. So I'm immigrated in Israel. I felt like an immigrant sometimes. Oh, really? Yeah, because I'm, in Israel, you have this uh, split between people who came from Arab countries mm -hmm. and people who came from European countries, yeah. even though yeah. both of them are Jewish, but it's different cultures. Yeah. And it was always, uh, there was some friction. Mm -hmm. Israel is very racist towards the people within the country. Yeah, I heard that. Yeah. I mean, we have a kind of a racist problem in Germany as well. I think it's a worldwide <laughs> problem. Yeah. yeah. So I did not feel so, so belong there. Mm -hmm. And here it's, um, I also don't feel so belong here, but uh, I find also the, the outlaws, you know, all the, the pirates, I would mm -hmm. call them. Also the people who are immigrating and they don't really belong anywhere. And somehow we become friends, and uh, then I found my, my my family all over the world. Oh, nice! Yeah, yeah, so I feel more like I'm a citizen of the world, and mm -hmm. I have I have way more to offer when I'm not limiting myself to mm -hmm. being this or that. But still, I'm connected to my roots. Yeah. So, what is home for you? Uh, it's everywhere I feel comfortable. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I realize that um, it takes some some different perspective. But once I manage to tune into this perspective, I can just be everywhere I want and I would feel comfortable being there. Mm. And no matter what will happen, I know it's going to be okay, even mm. if it's bad stuff happening. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Do you feel kind of an immigrant or you feel that you have your places, your home here and your home there? Or what would you say is your home? Um, I would say... Um... I'm, I would say I'm still kind of uh, searching 
for something that could be home. I feel I, I feel at home in Berlin, maybe not so much in the rest of Germany, but Berlin is really like an island. You grew up in Berlin? <laughs> I live here for 20 years. So mm. Where <laughs> I, did you? I, I grew up in West Germany and mm. close to Cologne, just sort of this area. So West, West Germany. Yeah, it's a really cool yeah. area as well. Huh? It's, it's really cool there in this area. Uh, I don't know. Uh, it's not the, the worst place to grow up. <laughs> it's very industrial, um, oh. the city where I grew up. And um, what I really, I've, I really found a lot of freedom in Berlin and a lot of diversity and also, you know, also cultural, social education and all that matters to me, I found in Berlin. So I feel very much at home in Berlin. Same time, I feel at home in Asturias in, in, in Spain, where my family is from. Um, although there, they also see me as an exotic person, you know, from a German city. Um, like I come there with all this, I, these ideas from the city and they're just very like simple um, workers, you know, like. Yeah, simple life. Yeah. So they know a lot more about animals and about farming and about food or whatever than, than I do. And I, I can learn a lot from them. And you spend also a year there in Spain? Part of uh, the year? I, I spend a part of the year there. Yeah. This is so nice. Yeah. This is my dream to have somewhere like in, in Berlin, a big city, yeah. but also a place where I can go and retreat. It is a dream. Like I inherited my father's house two years ago. It's a very, you know, simple house in the village, but it was a, a school, the village school. So uh, downstairs it has like a big hall where workshops can happen. And, you know, I already started teaching yoga there for the people there, which was super nice. Just and teaching yoga. I also teach yoga. Yeah. You take care of yourself. Yeah, I this do. Is good. <laughs> yeah, you have important. a healthy lifestyle as well. Hmm? well. You have also a healthy lifestyle. I would yeah, say. I would say. I mean, yeah, with was uh, not super, super healthy, but I, I do my best. Yeah, um, it's important. It seems like you're really doing a lot with the music and you have the, the record label that you're a part of. And now you're just being here, even mm -hmm. though you're quite uh, energetic and centered, you have a lot of going on. <laughs> and I think this is really important uh, to keep the balance. Would you agree mm -hmm. on that? Uh, it is definitely. I mean, also with what we talked about in the beginning that you have to take care of all these different platforms and be on social yeah. media and everything. It's so important to switch off the phone and go back to nature. So after listening to this podcast, <laughs> switch off the phone, go back to nature and take care of yourself, you know, to, to let your eyes feast on the green. Yeah. And um, yeah, it's important to find a balance. Um so relaxing mm, they even yeah. to go barefoot outside now it's warm mm. and this is very relaxing just yeah. to be there and and being a human mm. that's true yeah i'll go back one day after the release show <laughs> i'll be i'll be back in spain and then play a few shows there and also i will also play in my little hometown which is very special for me so my family is going to come. <laughs> oh, this is nice. Yeah. It's super cute because also one member of the family is going to be in one of the videos. We shot a few videos, um, four videos of the, the songs that are going to come out. Um, it's also a Spanish filmmaker. And she is like over 70 and she is also in one of the videos. And Ooh. so it's going to be a concert, a showing of the videos, and she's going to be in it. And What's her name? Huh? What's her name? Her name is Nanny. Nanny, cool. Yeah. Shout out to Nanny. Yeah, shout out to Nanny. What do you like about her work? Her work? Yeah, that you did together. Uh, uh, she's just she's starring in the in the video. Oh, she's not the. That's oh. the seventy-year-old person okay. that is going ah. to be starring. Uh, who's yeah. the filmmaker? Uh, he's, he's, his name is Pablo Casanueva. Cool. Mm. I'm curious about it. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's also, it's already on my website, it's um, barbara minus cuesta de, and there you can watch the videos and, you know, and also on my YouTube channel, it's a very, very slow music videos, so it's not like this bam, 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 loud, look at me, look at me stuff, but it's really like one cut maybe for half a minute and then another picture for half a minute. 
and then another picture. So we try to be really, really slow, really quiet down, really calm down the mind. And yeah, I'm excited to hear if people will like it. Yeah, I'm curious. I will watch mm. it definitely. Cool. Yeah, we don't have so much time with this podcast, <laughs> which I don't like because usually I have a, a lot of space, but I give you the spaces you need. We have like uh, maybe seven minutes. Oh, okay. um, so I'm um, thinking, interesting question. If your music was food, mm -hmm. what kind of food would your music be? If my music was food, it would be um, a slow cooked meal, probably, of um, many different ingredients and um, probably Spanish. <laughs> ingredient <laughs> just because they taste better <laughs> <laughs> and um like there would paella? be something sweet and something salty in it all right yeah is paella would be good uh, good imagination for music and um, paella mm, would be like more from the south um and i don't know the span the english words for like when you put everything into a pot and then, you know, you have this warm grounding ingredient. Yes. Yeah. It's a stew, like, what is the word? Yeah, a stew, something like that. Yeah, it's to follow. Yeah. Yeah, very comforting. Yeah, your music is really incredible. Oh, there is you. something very soft, but very strong in the same time about your music. And I think the message that is coming out of you, also the way you perform it, it's really touching and just penetrates the emotions for me. Yeah. Thank you. That's yeah. a really nice compliment. Any last words before we finish the podcast? Any last words? How can people find you? Um, you can find me everywhere now. <laughs> I really try to be on all the plat like important platforms are a band camp where you can get the music and you can I also was like put in details like the song lyrics and also wrote something about the song um so you can read like how did it happen how did why did I write the story what is the story about and there's also merch you can buy and then I am also a lot on Instagram where I post about concerts and post some snippets about the music and then the new web website um yeah that's it. Follow Barbara everywhere she's on online. And there is a concert on July 5th, which is my birthday. So if you want to buy me a present, go to the concert. Yeah. Hell yes. Cool. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Oh. Ooh. Yeah.
abrió el cielo con fuerza de sus penas. Te tiras a la tumba a llorar. Igual que el río cruza orillas y barreras.
wacht und so lang wie es regnet, hat er die Macht, der nicht viel braucht zum Leben und Kakao selber Schau den Mond an, die Sterne, das Meer und dann lerne, dass es kommt, wie es kommt und irgendwann, wenn du gehen musst, musst du Ich will einfach hier liegen, ich liebe das Nichtstun, lass uns einfach hier liegen. Ich werde irgendwann fliegen, aber vorher müssen wir ausruhen. Und irgendwann, wenn ich gehe.